We've talked in depth about this final book in the Dark Tower series, but I don't feel like I've said anything. I've said enough where people who've actually read it will, will understand what we're talking about, but I don't feel like I've said so much that that it's not worth reading it. Um, now, again, you're you're getting a big ask because you have seven you have seven books to read if you want to do the entire Dark Tower series, not counting all the little um, side stories and things like that that you don't necessarily need um, for it, but add something to it, I guess. But then also you got these books that are long, and and this one um, is one of King's books that goes over a thousand. So this one, The Stand, It, and Under the Dome are all books that are over a thousand. I don't think he has any other novels that break a thousand. Um, I could be wrong, but that's the best of my memory. But this is one of four books that goes over a thousand, and it's one of seven books in the series. So, um, qu quite a uh, quite a big moment if you decide you want to read The Dark Tower. But I enjoyed it, and it uh, it has a very broad and interesting mythology. I think my goal is to finish up as as crazy as this sounds to finish up all of Stephen King's books by the end of this year, which if I keep a decent pace should be doable um it still gives me a little bit of cushion even with the pace that i'm going and then i want to start uh, brian Keene revisited uh, so i've over the last year or so i've been collecting up brian Keene's books and putting them in order of publication it's a little tougher with brian Keene uh, because he's prolific but he's all over the place so he has stuff published everywhere going out of print coming back into print so I'm having to work hard to kind of keep track of, of his writing catalog, what's available, what isn't, and then um, plugging those books in as they as they come back out or I find them uh, used or anything like that. But my goal is to um, is to start on Brian King's books, which will be easier reading because, of course, he, wrote, he writes shorter books. Everyone writes shorter books than Stephen King. Are you going to get to later and stuff published this year too? I am. And I've actually calculated that in, so I already bought later. I keep look. It looks like I'm looking off camera, but literally with my um, my streaming setup, um, the shelf there's a there's a shelf that runs the length of my office, and then down this other side, and over here is a lot of like memorabilia stuff at this point because I got a bookshelf that caught some of my books. But Stephen King's book starts at the corner of my office and runs the shelf behind where I'm facing, and then we get to later almost four fifths of the way down the shelf. There's one more book that he has that's coming out in September. There'll probably be plenty more after that, but in terms of this year, there's one more that's coming out in September. And so I've calculated in that to, to get that finished as well. And then, of course, I'm going to jump back to it. Every every time he writes something new, I'll read it and write, and write the two posts for it. Um, but it won't be one of those things where I'm constantly having, trying to catch up. Um, and I, while I was reading Faithful, it turns out he wrote he co-wrote a uh, novella a short novella uh, with Onan um, called uh, A Face in the Crowd. And he actually reference it, references the idea in Faithful. So in the middle of, of Faithful, he just says, I have this idea about this you know, thing. I'm not going to ruin the premise of the story. Um, but he said, you know, I may do something with it. So I, I actually looked up to see, okay, did he do something with this? And it turned out he had written a novella with Onan again. Um, he changed the title. He was going to call it Spectators when he talked about it in the um, in Faithful. Uh, but it turns out that he'd written this novella and it was available. It's only available in ebook and audio and that kind of thing. But in all my research of making sure I had every single one of King's books, it turned out here's this n other novella, uh, fortunately short, um, that's available, but I didn't have it. So I was like, oh, great. So... <laughs> I found one more one more book that I had to read, um, and I joked on Twitter that Brian Keene does the same thing to me that um, he does it more than King. Where like I'll be collecting his books, and I'll be like, okay, I have everything that's available. Uh, these other books are going to become available, and I'll buy those up, and then I'll discover, oh, here's this other thing that I didn't know about that he wrote that's available. So I put it on the list and figure out what order it was in and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, if I didn't love reading these authors, I wouldn't put all this effort in. But again, when my goal is to finish up Stephen King and I know there's two more books coming out later is already out. And then the, there's another one coming in September. And then I discover a whole new novella that's in there and I got to plug that in where it goes. So, um, I'm going to read that one as well. And I added it to my master list to get finished. Um, but of course I, I've, I want Stephen King to keep writing books. Uh, I, even after I catch up, I hope he's got many more decades of writing ahead of him um, because uh, 
I'm very forgiving of Stephen King's work, but even his uh, his worst stories are ones that I'll read from beginning to end. So there's just something about his voice and writing that um, I'll I'll allow uh, him to to get away with stuff I won't I won't take from other authors. Uh, but part of it is that he's kind of earned my trust. So even when he breaks the rules, even when he he um, demonstrates his bad habits as a writer, uh, there's I always feel like, okay, this is a story I'm not going to regret reading. Um, and I've gotten to where I really enjoy the idea of, of sticking with an author, this idea of, you know, I started with Carrie, you know, years ago, because again, I was, I was reading other things as I went to, but then reading all these books in order. And I'm well over two thirds of the way done with this catalog. Um, and sh again, striving to get done this year, but it's, it's just been really cool to sort of walk his entire life. So starting in the seventies, and kind of moving up and kind of seeing, you know, cultural references that he made in books that are obviously different now. And at this point, I'm up to 2004 in, uh, in his publishing catalog and moving on all the way to 2020 by the end of the year and seeing what he's, what he's doing. And what I'm really excited about is that there's a lot of books at the end of the row that uh, have come out in the last couple of years that I haven't read yet because I'm reading everything in order. So I buy the book, but then I set it on the shelf knowing that I'm going to get to it when I, when I go through the order. So books that I normally would have already read, um, I still have to, I still have to jump on and I'm very excited about it because, uh, there's, there's changes to a storytelling that I'm seeing as we go through, um, that, uh, even, even an author like Stephen King crows as he continues to write. So as we're, as I'm seeing some of these better stories, and um, in my opinion, 112263, which is a little bit further down the line from where I am in his catalog, is his best book, his best book of all time. Um, it's not a perfect book, uh, but I think it's his best. His closest to perfect book is The Green Mile, and so I put The Green Mile as a, as a close second uh, to 112263. Um, the Stand is probably my favorite. I, I read that when I was younger, when the um, back in the '90s, when the uh, when the un, unabridged version came out, that was the first time I read it, and it captured my imagination. It changed the way I thought. It's probably the reason that I write apocalyptic stories now uh, was because of the stand. So it holds a place in my heart. And I think it's a great book, but I still put eleven twenty two sixty three as his best, and the Green Mile as a very close second best. And these are kind of second half of career books. And 112263 is almost like, um, you could almost argue that it's the stretch we're in now. If you looked at the, a decade of work, you got um, 112263 there. And if that book is great, I'm really excited to see what he did with stuff that's later on. Like, um, he always gets credit for, you know, The Stand and Salem's Lot and The Shining and all these books from the beginning of his career. And it makes it sound like he, he never wrote anything better as he went along. But there's all these gems uh, along the way. Uh, the Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon is a um, small, very short book. Short by any standard, but very short by Stephen King standards. And uh, it's sort of a hidden gem. Like, I kind of feel like it's if, if nobody had ever heard of Stephen King and they were just picking up books, I think um, The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon would get a lot more credit because it's just a great concise um, compacted story that I think is, is wonderful so I had 112263 is sort of the latest that I've I've read um, in terms of the bulk of his, his recent stuff and I'm really looking forward to getting into that th into that stuff because I have a feeling that some of it is a lot greater than a lot of people realize who may not have you know done this crazy thing that I did where I'm reading everything in order um, but again very much enjoy uh, this this style of reading and uh, enjoy doing it with Stephen King. So my plan, I, I read all sorts of stuff, so I pick up books all the time, which is probably why it takes me so long to get through this. I probably could have been done a lot sooner if I just focused on it. Um, but I kind of like the idea of picking an author and then just getting everything that they've written and just reading it from beginning to end. So uh, Brian Keene will be next. Um, I don't know if maybe Jack Ketchum. I don't know if I'm doing all K authors, but... Uh, Jack Ketchum is one, and of course the fact that he's passed away makes his um, makes his uh, catalog static at this point, so it would be a little easier to collect. He hasn't written quite as much as Stephen King or Brian Keene, 
but he's an author I may do. Uh, Armand Rosamelli is prolific, and it would be challenging to reread all his stuff, but I'm considering um, kind of doing that as well. Part of the process for me, of course, is is getting down all their work, uh, writing down everything that they've uh, they've written, and then figuring out the order, putting down, you know, what what was uh, done first, second, third, and fourth. Um, of course, with the if the authors are alive, and if I'm, you know, if if I've reached a point where you know I can talk to them directly, then it's a little easier uh, to get that order written down and figure out what's available. And in some cases, be able to buy uh, books directly from the author or that kind of thing. But so I'm, I'm kind of planning on continuing this on after I've uh, caught up with all Stephen King stuff. I'll do Brian King stuff now. Of course, the the downside is the more of these authors that I do, especially ones that are still alive, is every time they write something new, I'm gonna have to drop back and read it, and uh, and keep going with that. Which again, it's not a problem if I if I love the author, but uh, it'll start to stack up. Um, after a while, but I plan on reading for the rest of my life anyway, so uh, no big deal.